the shocking and tragic discovery on Tucson's south side. Five bodies scattered throughout one home, all apparently part of the same family. Just minutes ago, a mother of one of the victims held a news conference and she was extremely emotional. No, I don't even know what to say at this time. I'm overwhelmed with this, but my daughter is a beautiful person, and everybody knows that. She has a lot of love and support here, and none of them deserved it. And my parents, my mother and father, are one of two of the victims, and my brother Eric Carrillo, and my daughter, Bella Rodriguez. <laughs> Well, the details of the case have been developing all day long. Nine Year Size Justin Shecker is live at the home on Medina Road between I-19 and 12th. Justin, what else can you tell us? Well, Stella, tonight Tucson police say the motivation for this massacre remains a mystery. We just heard uh, from the grieving mother of the youngest victim who also lost uh, two brothers and her parents in this shooting. She believes her brother, uh, Christopher Carrillo, uh, snapped because of a possible mental illness uh, he was suffering from. Now, homicide detectives, they were out here into the early morning. Let's go ahead and show you the names of the five victims from this mass shooting. Uh, police identified them as 58-year-old Raul Carrillo, his wife, 53-year-old Karen Sar their son, 32-year-old Eric Carrillo, and 17-year-old Isela Rodriguez. Uh, she is the couple's granddaughter and the daughter of the mother we just heard from. Police say the gunman was uh, the couple's son, 25-year-old Christopher Carrillo. Take a listen now to a video a viewer sent us from when police arrived here yesterday evening. Once Tucson police went inside, they found the bodies of Chris Carrillo and his four victims in different parts of the house. Police say Chris shot and killed his parents, an uh, older brother, and uh, the Isela, who was about to become a high school senior, before he turned the gun on himself. Do police believe Christopher's actions yesterday were premeditated in any way? We don't know what, what the motivation was behind it. Uh, all we know is, I mean, they were out there all night. Uh, they continued through the night into the morning investigating, uh, trying to find out who last saw everybody, who spoke to Christopher last. Now, this is not the first time this family has had to grieve a loss from a homicide. We've learned uh, that young Isela's father uh, was murdered 17 years ago in a cold case that was never solved. Now, Homicide Survivors was out here, and they will be helping collect money to help this family lay to rest uh, the five family members who died in this uh, tragic incident here from last night. Guy, Stella. Justin, thank you. Craig Smith is also on scene to bring us KGON 9 team coverage. Craig, what are people close to this story saying now that they know the grim news? Well, Guy, if you say people are shocked, there's really no surprise in that. And take a look at the expression of shock and grief that you see here in the neighborhood as they put together a memorial for this family at the house where they died. But people tell us they are shocked even though they knew Chris Carrillo was troubled because they never thought he was troubled enough to kill. A cluster of candles marks the wall between the neighborhood and the house where so many died. By phone, one of Raul Carrillo's daughters told us Chris Carrillo was troubled and withdrawn and did get some mental health treatment, but she says no one thought he was dangerous. She says the youngest victim, Isela Rodriguez, is normally not at the house, but Chris Carrillo convinced her to walk there with him as if he wanted to gather as many family members as he could before the killing began. A neighbor told us something about Chris Carrillo did not seem right. Normal family has, has issues, but his was just a little bit more, you know. He had a hard time uh, socializing, communicating with the neighbors, I guess. But a friend says he saw no hint of trouble. Um, two days ago, he was finally just to say hi to my brother and just said that he was taking a walk and that's it. This is the only survivor from the house on Calle Medina, the family dog. Pima Animal Services rescued him in early afternoon. If the family doesn't claim him, he may be up for adoption. Now, another mystery from this killing. How did Chris Carrillo get a weapon? No one we talked to had ever seen him with one. Reporting live, Craig Smith, KGON 9, on your side. Craig, thank you. And